Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few years ago, I did a series of videos where I was showing things that were hidden inside of Lightroom Classic. Those videos proved to be very popular. I haven't done any in a while, and there's some more things I'd like to show you. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some things that are hidden in Lightroom Classic. I've actually known about all of these things for a few years, except this first one. I just learned about this first hidden feature in Lightroom Classic from Scott Kelby. Specifically, it has to do with something that is hidden in Preferences. If you go to Lightroom Preferences on a Mac, you'd find that under the Lightroom Classic menu. And on most Macs, it will say Preferences, but actually on some Macs, it says Settings. On a PC, you'll find Preferences under the Edit uh, menu. Once you open up Preferences, you'll be on the General tab, and you'll notice there's a button down here to Reset All Warnings. What that means is when you first start to use Lightroom and you try to do something, maybe delete an image, it's going to come up with, do you really want to delete this, or something like that, whenever you do certain things. And there's often a little like checkbox in the corner, do not see this again. And you would check that and you'd never see it again. Well, if you want to see those things again, you would click this button. What is hidden though, is if you hold the Alt or Option key, Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, you'll notice you'll get three buttons. You still have that Reset All Warnings dialog. And you'll also see Reset All Preferences and Relaunch. So throughout uh, your use of Lightroom, you've probably went to the Preferences um, dialog and you've set certain preferences. You've checked some check boxes, you've unchecked others. Well, if you'd like to get Lightroom working like it did when you first started using it, hold in that Alt Option key and press that middle button. To the right of that, you see Generate Diagnostic Report. If something in Lightroom isn't running properly and you need to contact Adobe Support, what you can do before you contact Adobe Support is click this button to generate this report. Save the report somewhere to your computer, and then you could share that with them, and that may help them troubleshoot your issue. Now, as I mentioned, I just learned this recently from Scott Kelby. So what I did is I went through the other tabs after I learned this, or the other headings here, and I just hit the uh, Alt Option key to see if anything happened. And what I noticed is when I was in Lightroom Sync, if I hit that Alt Option key, I got three buttons down here. I could generate a diagnostic report. This is for the sync activity. Or I could rebuild the sync data. About a year ago, uh, my Lightroom Classic was stuck on sync. It would just continually be syncing and it never finished sync. I suspect that if I knew about this, I could have rebuilt that sync data and it would have fixed that sooner than what I ended up getting it fixed. As I actually went online to my uh, Lightroom data that was online and I deleted everything there and then it fixed it. So I think I could have just done that by clicking on this button. Now, when I say online, you could view your sync data on the web with this button. And if you click that button, what will happen is it will open up your browser. And then from your browser, you'll be brought to your sync issues area of your browser. And this is what I'm talking about that I actually did. And you could see it here. So that, as I mentioned, is I just found this out recently myself by just going to the different headings within preferences and holding in that alt option key. Now, a couple other things you could do in Lightroom that are hidden. You'll notice uh, I have an image here and it's edited. And you'll also notice that whatever I edited has a little lit up like eyeball. So, for example, on effects, I could turn off what I did in effects. Specifically, I added a vignette by just clicking and holding with the left mouse button this eyeball. So you could see that's without whatever I did in effects and that's with what I did in effects turned on. Well, that's temporary. You have to hold in that left mouse button while you do it. If you want to make it a little more permanent so that you could do other things while that's off, hold in the Alt Option key and the eyeballs turn into a little like power switches. And then I could turn off what I did in effects. And now you'll notice it's off, not really permanently, but it's off where I don't have to hold in the left mouse button. I could do other things with that vignette off. And when I want to turn it back on, hold in that Alt Option key again, you'll get that power switch again, and you can turn it back on. Now, you'll notice if I hold in the Alt Option key that 
the little power switch is not available under lens blur and it's not available under basic. So you only could do the other tabs, uh, not lens blur and basic. Why that is, I do not know, but that's the way that is. Now we drill down a little deeper and let's say I open up the basic tab. You'll notice that there's headings here, white balance, tone, and presence. If I hold in the alt option key, you'll get an option then it says reset tone, reset white balance, reset presence. So if I hold in that alt option key, I could reset tone by just clicking right here. You can see it reset everything. Now I'll undo that by hitting command Z on my Mac to undo it. One little note though, wherever you see these options within these tabs, when you hold in that alt option key and it says reset, you can just double click on it without holding in the alt option key. So if I want to reset tone, just double click on the word tone without holding in any button and I'll reset it and I'll undo it. And it's the same for any of the headings that you'll see when you hold in that alt option key and it says reset, reset, reset. You could really just double click on those. And it's available pretty much everywhere. So here with the tone curve, it says adjust right now. But if I hold in the alt option key, it will say reset. Color mixer. Um, I am in the luminance section of the HSL tab. And if I hold in the alt option, you can see it's reset and I get reset point color, reset mixer. But again, I could just double click on those headings and accomplish the same thing. It's everywhere. So just hold in the alt option key on any of these tabs and you'll get the reset option. And again, wherever it says reset, you don't have to hold in the alt option. You just double click on the heading sharpening and you'd reset it just like that. So if you need to reset something like that, you could do it. Okay, now if we look over at the left-hand panel at the bottom, you'll notice that there are two buttons, copy, dot, 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 and paste. If I want to copy the edits from an image, such as this edited image, to this image that is unedited, what I could do is I could click on this edited image, click on the button that's copy, dot, 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 and I'll get the copy settings dialog. And here I could specify exactly what edits I did that I want copied to the clipboard to later paste to a different image. And you'll notice that I have everything checked except remove, crop, and high dynamic range. So then I could just click copy and copy those edits to the clipboard. Then I could go to this image here and just click on this paste button and it will paste those edits to this image. It may take a second or two because it's going to copy the masking as well. So now I just did that, fine and dandy. Now, you'll also notice that if I go back to the original image, that I've been calling this button copy dot dot dot. And again, when you press this button or click on it, it's going to bring up this copy settings dialog. Well, what if you already know that you have every checkbox checked the way you want it? Well, you could skip this step where this box will show up by holding in the alt option key. And you'll notice when I hold in the op alt option key, the copy dot 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 button turns into just copy. Then I'll click on that button. And when I do, it just copied the edits as specified in that copy settings dialog box to the clipboard. Then I could click on another image and I could click on paste and it will paste those settings to this image. And again, it has to recreate the masking. So it takes a second to do it. So if you want to save a step and you don't want this copy settings dialog box to pop up because you know you have everything set properly there, just hold in that alt option key and click on that copy button. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you, we're going to jump over to the library module. And again, we're going to go over and look at this left-hand panel. You'll notice there's a couple buttons here, import and export. So I get import images. I could export this image or any number of images I had selected in the film strip. If I hold in the Alt Option key, you'll notice those buttons turn into Import Catalog and Export Catalog. So if I have another catalog that I want to import into this catalog, kind of merge the catalogs together, just hold in that Alt Option key and I could click that button and do it. If, on the other hand, I have this catalog and I want to export it to use in a different Lightroom catalog or use by itself in a different computer or something like that, I could again hold in that Alt Option key and click on Export Catalog and that will take care of that. So there are some hidden features that are in Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.